Welcome back. Alright, today I'm be showing you how to do a uh, simple little game here. I'm going to just get a man to jump from the base of the ground onto a second plane over a fence, and if he hits the fence, he'll restart. It's going to be a simple side scroller for right now, and I'll make a second part which will follow up, and you know, we'll make the screen start to slide downward and continue the game onwards. But for right now, we're just going to get the basics down. Okay, so first thing you want to do is I'm going to lock the screen in the, the portrait landscape. So that way we, we know for sure that it's going to lay out the way that we place it here. The first thing I'm going to want to do is go ahead and chill layout. And we're going to want to make a horizontal arrangement. So I'm going to click and drag that in there. That is going to be... Now we're going to make it 400 pixels. See how that looks like on there. That's good enough right now. We're going to fill the patron with that. Alright, now we're going to move on. And I'm going to get a canvas because that's what we're going to be working with. So you want to go and you drawing. And grab your canvas, click and drag. Put that right over there. <laughs> Then we're going to want to get some buttons in here. So we're going to want to place that to the side of that. So we're going to want to go underneath the interface. Yeah, actually, we're going to want to have to stack them on top of each other. So we're going to do layout again. Grab ourselves a vertical arrangement. Place that inner. And I'm going to want to make that... Let's see... Thing here what would be the best orientation for this. Well, let's, let's do about 50. I think 50 will do it just fine. Let's go ahead with 50 on the width there. I think that's just big enough because we're simply going to just have him move from left to right, and then I'm going to have a following button. It's going to actually make him jump. We're going to want to have that right there to be... Oh, we'll make it 400 so we know it's going to be exact. Alright, let's go ahead and uh, make this as big as we can get to go here. So we're going to have the width be full patron. And we're going to have the height to be 400. Just as big as our horizontal arrangement. Alright, now we're going to have to put some buttons in here. It's going to kind of stack them on there. So I'm going to have to grab, uh, we want three of them. So one, two, and three. I'm going to go ahead and rename the furthest one down to be jump second one it's going to be going to the right if you hold in the right orientation so I'm going to label that right and obviously the last one's going to be left left I am going to go ahead and remove all text from them and this is the left one. So I'm going to want to place an upward looking picture in there. So I'm going to click on the image. I already uploaded these up here. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Left arrow. Let's see what that looks like. I think that's one. I'm going to have to make that 40 by 40. Yeah, alright. And then we're going to do the same thing for here, get rid of the text because we want anything over the picture. Image is going to be that one, the one below it. And like I said, you can just pick any arrows. I just got these off of Google. Image is just quick. Because I'm not going to be actually using it in my app, so I don't have to worry about any copyright. It's just for sure right now. Alright, and then this one right here. Go ahead, place the image in there. I don't 
think I got that one. last image. Go ahead and search for that one just a minute. All right, all I did was just go ahead and upload that other image that I, I needed. So I'm gonna go ahead and I just grabbed that photo again, just placing it into the image. Nothing special right now. We're just placing buttons horizontal. We're just getting the layout looking the way we want to look right now. We'll work with the blocks. That's the hard part. Later. Again, 40. I want to get that text off of there, so go ahead and delete that. Now I'm going to want to get that green button all the way down here, so I'm going to go ahead and just go into our layout again. I'm going to go ahead and get this one right here, and we'll make the height. I'm going to say, let's say 250, see how that looks first. A little bit too much, let's do 225. Uh, that's close enough for right now. Okay, so now that we got the buttons laid out and we got our canvas, it's a pretty good size. We're now going to start placing stuff inside the actual canvas. So I should be start moving or be our floors or whatever have you be. Um, I'm gonna want to go ahead and grab a image sprint, and this is going to be our little dude for the beginning part. And I'm gonna go ahead and change the picture here and put his little dude in suit now one thing I will let you know when you do upload these pictures make sure they're in the right orientation simply just go into your open up the file and just rotate it in the windows you know or Mac whatever you have and rotate it to the position because you cannot change the orientation of the picture until it's actually um, outside you have to actually do it inside outside before you import it or else it'll be all messed up uh, width we're going to uh, I'll say about 70 for width his height uh, let's do about like 25 let's see how that looks he's a little bit big but he looks all yeah we're gonna we're gonna leave him just like that for right now quite honest I think he'd be just fine just like that kind of just place um close I can there all right all right he's looking legit now we'll do in suit looking awesome all right now we're gonna go and place a floor for him to jump on and the width yeah, we will go ahead and make that 10 for his width and the height I'm gonna make it want to count long so let's do 250 and the image that we are going to be picking. I just have just a plain black background, which would just make a black plane. I'm not trying to do anything too fancy here. I'm just trying to show a concept here. We'll worry about actually moving and having the picture behind it move and have him progress to the level later on. But for right now, we're just going to be showing you how to move your character, get him to stand on a plane, and maybe have some type of interaction with the fence. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and drag, drag a ball right into here. Gonna put it right here. This is gonna be your finishing point. You're not actually gonna see this. So I'm gonna go ahead and make its visibility hidden. Ooh. There we go. I clicked on the wrong thing. I have to actually. Enabled visibility. So sorry about that. That was the canvas I accidentally activated there, not the ball. So it's going to be invisible just there so that way when the character does get to that position in the game he'll shoot back to the beginning and then I'm going to go ahead and grab another image sprint and it's going to be for a fence and go ahead and get that picture of the fence change it In 40 by 20 close enough and you should be all set for the next step 
go ahead and go into our block editor. Alright, so I renamed a couple things in here, and now we're going to add gravity to the environment. And one thing I did forget to do is actually put a clock element and orientation element into here. So user interface, I'm going to go ahead and grab our clock, put it in there, and then our new sensors, we're going to go ahead and grab the orientation sensor, and go ahead and place that in there. Those are only two sensors you're gonna need for this. And if we want to, later on I'm gonna go ahead and put a notifier in there. Place this up to you know that notify the user that he has won the game. Alright, so let's go ahead and put a some gravity in here. In order to do that, we're gonna want to place our clock. So when clock one is initiated, we want it to do something. We want it always, every time it's triggered, we want the character to move towards the ground because that's going to be our gravity element. And then go ahead and place that in there. And then we're going to want to go ahead and grab our man because that's the only thing we want to actually move in here. And the move to function. Place that underneath it there. And then we're going to go ahead and grab some maps. Let me go ahead and... Actually, that's the wrong function. We need subtraction. Uh, addition, subtraction. Place on the X. And go ahead and grab this. And put a number in there. And I'm going to change that to 3. I'm going to explain the logic behind this in just a minute. We're going to need our man, and we're going to want to grab his Y location, place it in there, duplicate it, put it into the X location, and change this to X. Alright, if we go back into our design, I'll show how this works. Click on our clock here, and our clock is going to trigger every 1000 milliseconds. That's like one second. I actually want it to trigger every, let's do 50 milliseconds. It will be triggered. And every time it's triggered, it's going to move the man down negative three spaces towards the ground. Obviously, once he hits the border, he'll pop back up and he won't go any further. So that's our constant gravity action that we got going on here. Alright, our jump button will be our first button we're going to make this guy do something here. So let's go ahead and grab our, our jump. Jump click. So when it's clicked, we'll go ahead and click that in there. And once again, we're going to grab the man and his XY location. Move to. Place that underneath there. And I'm going to go ahead and grab this one, duplicate it. Instead of having to re pull it out, I'm just going to negate the three. So negate it, and I'm going to put in 80. So now it's adding 80 to him. And duplicate the Y, and place that down there because we're not changing the Y. Now we want to move him left, so I'm going to grab when left is clicked. Click that down there. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this slide, put down here, and we want to move him. Uh, let's do eight. Eight spaces should be good. I'm actually gonna duplicate this whole entire thing. Change that from left to right, and negate the eight. So negative eight. And they'll add 8, and so it goes back the other direction. Now we actually want to make a floor element. So that way, when he hits the floor, because right now if he hits that floor, he'll just go right through it. So you want the floor to actually hold him up. So we want to go ahead and click on the floor, go to collide with, click and drag that over.